Hello viewers and welcome. Um, in this video I'm going to take you on a tour of this printer I recently picked up. Um, I've seen these printers on eBay before and have all been priced way too high. You know the sort of thing, typical listings by speculators who think they can resell second-hand tech um, way over what, it, uh, what it's actually worth. Um, but thankfully my local recyclers had one, um, this one, that was originally up for 100 quid. Um, nobody bid on it and eventually the price slid down to uh, 20 quid. Um, so I popped a bid on and I was the only bidder. So I won this for 20 pounds. So this is a video printer. Uh, these types of printer date back probably back into the early 90s where they typically would have been uh, black and white thermal printers um, and they were designed to print still images from a video source. Um, so that probably would have been something like a medical device, like an ultrasound machine, um, that kind of thing. Uh, but as the text moved on, um, we've ended up here with full colour. So this particular model is a Sony UP25MD and it's one of a range of professional video printers used um, as I said, primarily for medical imaging. Uh, from what I could tell, this model dates from around about 2010, uh, but I think it does appear to be still current. Uh, it's still available to buy, brand new, for the princely sum of just one and a half thousand quid. Wow, um, yeah, that uh, 20 quid score on this uh, looks to be a pretty good bargain to me. So, specifications. Um, I, I've said it's full colour. Um, its print method is dye sublimation and it prints onto photographic quality paper at 423 dpi. Uh, it takes around about 20 to 30 seconds for a print, depending on the paper styles that you actually have in the machine. Um, there's two different sizes, large and small, and I will show you those in just a moment. Now, as this is a video printer, um, it's really only designed to accept video-based signals, so it's not really easy to connect to a computer um, but to be honest the really the reason I bought this was so I could plug it into my Quantel paint box and take prints from my paint box um, so I'm just fine with it just being a video only that's yeah, I don't really have an issue with that so the uh, inputs are composite S video and component and it supports both standard definition PAL NTSC uh, but it also does high definition in 720p and 1080i formats. So you do have access to um, slightly higher resolution um, if you can work a way to get this connected to your computer. You know, for example, because this has component video input, you can um, adapt that to VGA and uh, most cards, video cards nowadays allow you to um, configure custom video resolutions and you can usually find that they can um, output in, uh, interlaced video formats if you choose to uh, turn that feature on. Um, if you don't have that on your video, video card you could use something like a video scaler. Um, they can they will generally be able to convert to interlaced formats for you if you need it. Uh, if you want a little bit of background on video scalers um, I did a video um, not too long ago about them. Uh, there'll be a link up in the top corner there if you want to go and see that. So yes, if you can manage to get this connected to your PC and output um, uh, 1920 by 1080, then you'll have access to two megapixel prints. And on the large paper, that will get you um, five by three inch prints. Um, so that works out at about 384 DPI. So it's not to be sniffed at. Um, and the quality is exceptional out of these, these printers. So uh, as I'll show you in a moment when I do some test prints. Um, I should also say there is a version of this printer which has USB. Um, it doesn't have the video input. It has USB so you can connect it to a computer and presumably that would give you access to the full print resolution. Um, and of course it'd be a lot easier to print. So as this is dye sublimation, it does have a consumable part. Um, the print packs can only be bought um, as genuine Sony one. There doesn't appear to be any um, copy brands out there. They're not cheap. Uh, a pack of the small prints costs um, online uh, about £85. 
and the large prints are about £100 for a pack. The small packs contain three print ribbons and three packs of paper. That gives you 240 prints in total. The large packs are a um, slightly smaller number of prints. And you get three packs of 50 for 200 prints. So in terms of cost per print, the large uh, paper is about 50p a time and the small ones are about 35p. So with that said, you can still pick up bargains. Um, both of these packs are brand new, old stock, and I picked up both of these for 25 quid each. So yeah, massive savings if you actually look around um, and spend a bit of time trying to trace down a bargain. So in total, um, we've got 25 quid, 25 quid, and 20 quid. So 70 quid um, gets you a fully working printer with paper ready to go. I think that's a pretty good deal, to be honest. So uh, let's take a look around. Um, obviously this is a professional bit of kit. Um, it's designed to be used in a professional environment and last a long time, so it's very, very well built. Uh, on the front here we have a, a LCD uh, with uh, status information, menus and that kind of thing. Um, control panel um, to give you access to most of the most common printing options, you know, where you could do like um, for up printing and print multiple copies, that kind of thing. Now this uh, front panel folds down uh, to give you access to the print ribbon um, and you do have access to the, the paper drawer as well here. Now the uh, paper tray um, holds either the small or the large uh, print paper. Um, you can open up here and it just goes, the paper just sits in there. The print ribbon itself, which is the bit that supplies all the colour, is accessed with this tray here. Um, so this is the print ribbon, just to ease this out. So uh, this is dye sublimation, so there's going to be three colours on here. Um, CMY, there's no black, um, and it just transfers the ink from um, sections on this film onto the actual paper. Um, so this um, cartridge lasts as long as one of the print packs, so um, this being the large, you will get 50 prints out of this cartridge. Uh, the other interesting thing with dye sublimation and this type of printing is the there is a data security issue with these, um, and what that means is, as this actually prints, um, the negative of the image is actually um, effectively recorded onto this film uh, where the unused um, ink is left behind. So uh, when I get to the end of this uh, this print, um, this cartridge, I will pull this apart and we'll see what images were printed on it before I got hold of it because when I picked up this printer um, there were a number of prints still left um, available on it but some had been used so it means there will be some other prints on here that are not from me so um, I might take a look at that and if they're not if there's no personal information in there or anything like that I might show those on camera so these just slide into this little tray and then that just pushes home and around on the back we have all the inputs and outputs um, what's a nice thing about this is there is an output for every input so it means you can actually daisy chain this into an actual um, video system so you can bring the video into into this and then output this to a monitor. Um, there are a, a load of on-screen menus um, but they all just reflect what is shown on the um, the front panel LCD so um, using the on-screen menus just makes it a little bit easier to use. Uh, so we've got a PAL NTSC switch, uh, we've got the S-Video inputs and outputs, composite video and component. There is also RS-232 as well, so um, you presumably you can um, automate most of the functions with RS-232 and there's a, a couple of remote options as well. Um, very basic stuff like a, a hand switch or a foot switch just to allow you to um, make a print just by pressing a button on the floor. Okay, we'll give you a look inside. I'm not going to do a full tear down on this uh, because obviously I want to uh, keep it working and it's going to be quite a complicated thing, I'm sure. Um, and I don't really want to take it apart. Uh, but I will take the lid off so you can see, oops.
Right, uh, yeah, it looks really nice on the inside. Uh, very, very typical Sony construction. Um, uh, we've got a couple of cooling fans on the side here. Um, this is a thermal printer after all, so it transfers the, the inks um, off that film by thermal, um, a thermal print head, uh, presumably down in there somewhere. Um, we've got a few, no, a few, a ton of ribbon cables. Um, so let's just have a quick look what's going on here. Um, all the video inputs at the back here come up onto a small board and then that comes over onto this top card. Uh, we've got, um, oh, that's a name I've not seen in a long time, Trident. Um, PNX uh, 1501E, um, so, and it also has 266 megahertz on it, so that's going to be obviously some kind of video capture, um, digitization stuff. There's a couple of memory, um, LPDA uh, memory chips on there, so presumably that is doing the video capture, and there's probably a mezzanine connector somewhere uh, which connects down onto the board below. Um, can't quite see without taking it apart. I don't really want to start disconnecting the cables, I'm afraid. Um, looks like we might have some power supply stuff on there as well. Um, whether that's just for this board or for the bits down below, I have no idea. There is another board below which has the uh, RS-232 on it, just down in there. So that board just sits underneath this one. Um, we've got a ribbon cable up at the front here, that's going to run to the front panel. And there's going to be sense wires and all sorts of things all over the place. Yeah, there's not much to see down in down in here. There's a couple of rollers, and um, guessing this is the print head. I suspect that probably folds down and makes contact with the film with the paper underneath it. Um, yeah, there's a fan also on top of that. Cool things down. I think what I might do is. Uh, make a print with the lid off, that'd be interesting. Um, it looks like there's a few optical sensors down down in here. I think that is to um, reference. I've noticed there's a couple of black and silvered parts on here and they are different on the different size cartridges. So I think that is to identify what type of paper and printer um, I should say that it looks very clean in here. There's very little evidence of dust. So I suspect it might not have been used too much. I uh, was just connecting this up and I've just noticed this uh, awesome bit of mechanical engineering for a clunking power switch. Where, where is it? There you go. Look at that. All that pressed bit of metal. Imagine all the uh, designing and the, um, the machines made to actually manufacture that little that bit of metal just to for a power switch <laughs> awesome right so let's just power this up on and ready to go. Right, so I've got this uh, connected up to my paint box. I'll just power this on. You can see the uh, on-screen menus and there's, uh, if, you, whoop, if you go in, you can go through and change a whole load of different uh, options. You've got uh, the color options, so you can alter sharpness, brightness, contrast, all the typical stuff you'd expect. Um, Layout, so multi-picks allows you to um, capture four frames and print out um, either one frame, one large frame, two or four. Um, you can change the window and um, which is the video capture area, I suppose. And you can put uh, text captions, text captions on. Um, printing, you've got um, gamma settings, color balance. Um, you can have a number of presets as well, which is uh, quite useful. Um, video inputs, so um, I've just got this set up as a component and RGB. Uh, of course, you can see there it does um, YUV as well. Um, video outputs, so this is what comes out of the, the machine. Um, 
RBN remain, that just tells you how many um, pictures are still remaining on the cartridge. You can see that it just says 17 left. Um, and then the HD options, um, I've just got the video input stuff to set to automatic because it, it's just fine doing that. All right, let's uh, turn on my paint box. Right, so that's my paint box up. Um, so this is looking at um, composite video out of the printer at the moment. So what I'm going to do is just do a quick, a quick sketch and we'll print something out. Uh, oh, oh it's, it's all really laggy. Hang on, um, I'll need to switch to my other input, which should be there. So that should now be the um, SDI out of my paint box. Yeah, that's much better. Um, right, let's just uh, wipe the screen off. Okay, so I just need to reach around here and do um, capture and then print. Now we have our lovely glossy print. So, uh, as you can see, uh, yeah, really, really high quality print, lovely glossy paper, and yeah, the colours are really, really strong and vibrant. Um, there's lots of definition. There's you actually, it's actually hard to tell even at um, um, the standard resolution that the paint box is printing at that um, that it's low resolution. It's uh, it looks pretty good to be honest. There you go, there's a little bit closer up. Lovely, lovely print quality. And to give you a comparison of the large and small, this is the large print and this is one of the, the smaller prints. So you can see there, yeah, there's quite a bit of um, difference in size there. But um, as this, the actual printer itself is uh, pretty high resolution, um, they still look pretty good prints, uh, they're just a little bit small. Um, so I've got a few others here, um, that's another large print there. And another of the small ones. And uh, just going on from that, um, of course, if you connect this up to a PC and actually put it um, a 1080 interlaced signal into this, you can get um, two megapixel prints out of this. So um, the resolution just gets even better um, when you feed a high definition signal in. I won't do that now because I think you get the idea. Um, it's pretty good and um, I think it's well worth to keep an eye out for these printers on eBay 
just in case somebody lists one up for a reasonable price and you can pick up a bargain. So um, I hope you found this video interesting. Um, if you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, comments are always welcome in the comment section, obviously. Um, thank you to all my Patreon supporters who continue to support this channel. And if you want to be a Patreon yourself, uh, you're more than welcome. Uh, there'll be links in the description and you should have seen some links earlier on as well. So uh, thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.